It was given to me with a lot of love mm -hmm. and accepted with a lot of love. An engagement ring that will never become a wedding ring. Patricia Graves says she was planning to marry Robert Bryant, better known as Rocky, on her birthday, September 12th. I'm always loving, you know, but it's just hard knowing that he's not coming home every day. You know, the thing about this case, it was a terrible beating. And this person is just going to town on him. It was like there was no turning back. In the early morning hours of March 25th, 2008, 54-year-old Rocky Bryant was found brutally beaten in the fertilizer plant where he worked. He was laying there on the floor. And then I realized there was blood on the floor. It looks like our suspect came inside the plant where Rocky always worked out of and actually was waiting behind the door for him. I think just somebody that came there to beat the hell out of him was going to make sure he was dead and they were never going to get caught. Clearly a statement being made by the suspect. And Rocky grew up in secret, so Everybody knew who Rocky was. He's a guy. Close personal friend. And the paramedics are there and Rocky's still alive and he's sort of responsive. It's like, just, just say who did it. But all he could say is they beat me real bad. Because Rocky was still alive when investigators first arrived on the scene, it was not initially investigated as a murder. The scene wasn't preserved and officers weren't able to thoroughly question everyone and the case eventually went cold you know the thing about this case usually we're, we're working on ones a lot older and this one's only five years old so it might help us be able to find people this week our job is to interview as many people as we can possibly find somebody knows something to try and see if we have enough evidence to convince the DA to bring charges against the person or people responsible for killing such a wonderfully loved man in this community it has been 16 years and still no answers. At least consider her killing a cold case. Years later, the case is still unsolved. There are so many cold cases out there just waiting to be solved. The crime scene ultimately tells the story of the murder. We want to bring justice to these victims. Shane, you're the one that we initially talked to about the case. Well, you made the scene that day. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then after that, what was your involvement? I was the primary investigator. And still are? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Seagraves is a small town by Lubbock, Texas. You know, people go out of their way to help you. You know, you don't have to lock your car whenever you go into the store because, you know, everybody knows everybody. So when Rocky's murder happened and the way that it happened, I mean, it shook Seagraves up because nobody could figure out who would do this to a man like Rocky Bryant. And how many unsolved do y'all have in Gaines County? One. This is it? The one y'all's gonna help us with. Well, we're excited for y'all to meet Johnny Bonds and Armando Perez, the, the homicide guys that are here to help us all week long. Oh, absolutely. I've made a lot of beating deaths, and they made him suffer. Sheriff Ronnie Pitt, Sheriff Johnny Bonds, glad nice to, meet to meet you. When you see bodies that are brutalized, it's very personal. We're looking at somebody that knows this person. Video and audio, CDs. The biggest obstacle is lack of physical evidence. Autopsy photos, copy of my report here. The only way we're going to solve this is with information. We're going to have to talk to a lot of people. Okay, so Shane, when you pulled up to AgriLiance and they told you it was Rocky that was down, what'd you think? Who could have possibly had a vendetta against Rocky to beat him to the point to where, what I saw? I've seen a lot of stuff in my 20 plus years in law enforcement. Seeing Rocky head bashed in, legs broken is, is horrific. I walked up to him and asked, you know, who did this? He said, I don't know. Couldn't see him. They beat me. They beat me good. Right then, we thought it was just going to be an aggravated assault. You know, once he coded, that's when we shut everything down at the plant and told him, and secure it. Because Rocky was alive when the investigators came to the scene, it wasn't initially processed as a murder until he died about five hours later. It's always going to hinder an investigation because you're not talking to witnesses immediately and you're not preserving the crime scene as if it were a murder case because you don't know. Okay, guys, here are our suspects. How about we put Patricia Graves up on the board first? Rocky's uh, girlfriend slash wife. Given the severity of Rocky's injuries, it's really unlikely that Patricia is the one that caused the injuries, but she could have gotten someone to do it for her. So the big question is why? Pat would be the only one that knew Rocky's work regimen. You know, this is what time he gets up. He goes to this office in the morning. What else? Crack cocaine habit. 
Motive being possibly money if she thought she was going to get anything. She wrote in her notebook. She was pretty disgruntled with him, wasn't she? We knew that it wasn't a fairy tale relationship. The stories that we get is that Rocky and Pat would get to drinking and get to fighting. The affair. She lied in her first interview. Jane, was that to you? Yes, it was. What broke it open? The polygraph. When she failed it and we started grilling her on that, when she put in that statement, the first person that popped into her mind that would have done this was Louis, Louis Villarreal. In any murder case, the spouse is always going to be the first suspect. Patricia was initially interviewed, and then after being given a polygraph, she admitted to having an affair. Once that came out, she quickly started implicating her lover as the person who could have been involved. I'm going to say no. No problem. And that's because you yourself feel that Lou did it? Lou? Yeah. At first, Louis denied even knowing Pat and Rocky. He could possibly stand to gain money out of this, too, if she inherits anything from this. Was he plenty strong enough, Shane? Oh, without a doubt. Okay. Yeah, he worked in the body shop. You want to put Martell up? Yeah. yeah. Martell Justin Graves. Patricia's son but not Rockies. Okay, what are we gonna put under Martell? I'm sure that he would end up getting some of that money. If Martell's mother is upset with Rocky, he's gonna wanna defend his mom, most boys would. Now he's got some assaults in his criminal history, and he also is gonna be someone who his mom could very easily confide the details of Rocky's work habits in his routine, so he's big up on the suspect board. Are we all thinking that whoever did this probably brought their weapon with them or they picked something I up there? I think they brought it with them. You're gonna beat somebody, why, why would, would you, you take a chance on not finding what you want? He had numerous hits to his body that caused a lot of internal damage, both legs being broken. Legs, legs are hard to break. We suspected it's either gonna be a baseball bat or a metal rod of some sort. You know, in, in my experience, we run across homicides where they're shot, and they're, they're stabbed. We normally don't run across beating deaths. The injuries you sustain were tremendous. It's pretty sad. Frederick Bryant is one of Rocky Bryant's sons, and he's currently serving a five-year sentence for possession of a controlled substance. Mr. Bryant, we're here because we're looking into what happened to your dad five years ago. From what Shane and everybody here tells us, Frederick is just as sweet as his daddy was. And when the case went cold, it kind of made Frederick's life go off track, too. He raised you and your brothers there pretty much all by himself. It was fun. How cool it was, and my dad. How'd you find out what happened to your dad? I was out working, and my cousin called me and said my dad had got beat up on his job. So I just pulled up the pickup truck, and my time I grew up with him, he already passed away. And I just broke down. What What were you thinking? How and why? And who? It hurts. It's, it's hurting right now. I'm even talking about it. When I found out my father first passed away, I did feel like the world had ended. I haven't felt a pain like that before. Go to sleep thinking about it, wake up thinking about it. I think all the time that I wasn't there, he was alone while somebody was doing this to him. Wish I could have been there for him. And he didn't have to leave like this. I've been thinking for these five years that I failed my dad. And I, I couldn't make it up to him anymore because he's gone. Okay, and thank you for letting us come see you today. Thank you. I hope that if we can figure out who killed his dad, maybe when he gets out, that'll motivate him to get his life back on the right track. A really good piece of physical evidence that we have is footwear impressions that the officers found. It's important for us to get a better look at where these footwear impressions were to maybe help give us some clues as to where the killer was or what he did. So Shane, is this the door? This is the front door that he come from the main office to here every day. Hey, Rocky lived right there. So he's like walking distance to his house every day. Exactly. He'd leave his house, go to the main office every morning. 
check in, get him a cup of coffee. From the main office over there, he'd walk over here to the dry plant where his office is, and he'd come into this doorway. And he was right, right here? He was right in this general vicinity, right here. So now your footprints were where? In one of the reports, it does say that there was footwear like the person was facing the door. That's exactly what it is. The most interesting footwear impressions that the police found were located behind the door that Rocky walked right into. And all these lights would be down, the doors would all be shut. Mm -hmm. So it would be really dark in here when you're first walking in. Okay, so Rocky is coming through the door. Right. He takes one to the head. That one would put him down. So our, our beater keeps on beating him while he's on the ground with the door open. So he's got to be in a hurry because somebody could see him. After the killer beat Rocky all over his body, even to the degree that he broke both of his legs, we can tell from the shoe prints that the killer ran to the back door of the plant. Do you have the footprints coming in and going out or just going no, out? No, just going out that door. The shoe prints show us exactly how the suspect left, but I don't have any footwear that actually goes in the building. Was it locked from the inside? Yeah. It's like they just appear inside the fertilizer plant. I had to get in. Five years ago, Rocky Bryant was brutally beaten to death at the fertilizer plant where he worked. The biggest piece of physical evidence that we have are the shoe prints left by the killer at the scene in the plant. Hi, Officer James. Hello. Yolanda McClary. I have a great understanding on the footwear inside the plant, but I still don't on the exterior. So we're meeting up with Officer James and his dog, Hank. Yeah, he's a black lab. Black yeah. lab. But what I'm trying to do today is kind of go back over the footwear trail that led into this property and then how it led back out. You know, we saw the shoe prints inside the dry plant. We started tracking the prints out this way around these tanks and area. And once we got around this area, it was kind of hard to locate them because of the terrain. So I knew that Officer James had a, a tracking canine. This dog doesn't track like a bloodhound. He tracks off of skin particles. On that particular day, I started the track on the other side of these trees right here. The footprint was about in that area. And I hang track from there up under this bridge and come out on the other end right here by this tree. On the second track, somebody had the same footprint that we had found over here. And he tracked from that footprint across the highway here to the old hotel over here across the street. We tracked from there over to the packing building. That's the residence that Mr. Singleton lives in. He was sitting under the carport there, and he told us that he saw a male wearing a cap headed towards AgriLiance. At that time, Mr. Singleton just had a stroke, so it was really difficult for him to communicate. He just, he zigzagged right there. He was in and out between these tanks. You know, of course, he, he lost scent over here. He's tracking off of, of skin particles, and it's harder to do that on pavement. The footwear stops at some huge tanks, and then we don't really see it anymore. It's like they just appear inside the plant. Oh, here we go. We still have a lot of questions about how the suspect got in. So we are going to talk to some of the first responders that morning, which were Rocky's co-workers who found him. Hi. Talk about Rocky. What was he like? Oh, he was a great man. Very happy-go-lucky guy. He had a good heart. He was a close personal friend. Is he usually the first one here? Yes. Well, Rocky in the morning would always come in uh, probably around 6, 6.30. As I was coming through, Rocky, Rocky pulled up here to go into his plant. Get the lights turned on, get everything going outside. I pulled on the scales, I got out and came in. When I opened the door, the door actually hit him, hit, hit his legs. I thought he had, had had a heart attack or something. Mike Terrell comes running about his son, something has happened to Rocky. And so I uh, walk in the door. I basically just fell to my knees and, and just started talking to him and say Rocky you know what happened and you know he was able to respond but not very well but what did he say back to you basically said they hurt me real bad someone beat me up really bad did you ever hear him say back to anybody who beat him up no all the doors were locked and there's one door that Rocky always comes in the only way to get in is through the side ladder that I goes up walk through a catwalk just lie down to the fertilizer and was able to get in through so there that's what you guys think yes ma'am 
Sammy Baez starts to tell us about the catwalk and how the killer may have gotten in through the ladder. This is the only way to go up on the catwalk. And we're like, wait a minute. You have all this huge information no one's ever heard before because when Rocky was driven away by the ambulance, they all thought he was going to be okay. So they go back to work and never got interviewed about all these details, which is why you talk to everybody all over again in a cold case. I know that we need to test out Sammy's theory just to see if it tells us something else about our killer. I'm not a great person with heights. I'm okay with heights. Yolanda, you got, I'm sorry you have to do this, but this is going to show a jury one day how deliberate and intentional our murder was to get it done. All right, we're going to go in here and watch you walk it. And I'm looking at the catwalk going, are you serious? <laughs> this is like a don't look down. You know what, though, you guys? Yeah. That's a long way down. And then you got to crawl over this and then jump. I don't think just anybody could do this. It's, it's pitch black. You can't see. This is an extremely determined person. Well, I was going to say, I think it's also someone who's kind of macho. They're not afraid of anything. It's very dark. You're walking along it, and then you're going to jump into dry fertilizer, not knowing how well that's going to hold you either. That just screams driven. Well, you can tell there's a big old spot there that he jumped, you know, you like sucked in. You can see your whole body. Okay. Going across this way. And, and then, then it's behind right this the door. He was right here, right here where he pretty much was standing, right here waiting. Again, I believe that you can see the footprints just right here. Everything Sammy is saying is making total sense. The killer enters through the catwalk, walks across it, and then drops down. That's why we don't have any footwear impressions leading to the door. All right, so the ambulance guys are treating Rocky. So I went over to his girlfriend's house. So you walk from here straight to the house. And I yelled, Pat, you know, Pat. And I said, if something happened to Rocky. I don't know what happened. I know he got, you know, beat up. And she goes, okay, I'll be there in a minute. Just a normal talk. She didn't run or nothing. She just went walking from the house to the drive plant. And she's just standing there by the ambulance. No reaction or nothing to what happened, Rocky, who did this or anything like that. She, she has basically no real reaction. Yeah, that's right. All this time before we got to town, I'm thinking, I wonder what Pat's reaction was like when she heard about Rocky. Nothing. No questions, no response, no emotions, no nothing. You want some water or coke or anything? No, fine. We're bringing in Ashley White, who is Martell's wife and Patricia's daughter-in-law. <sighs> Ashley has always maintained that Martell was home the morning of the murder, but we need something more concrete than that to establish it. That could mean evidence that Martell really was home, or it could be information against somebody else. First of all, you're not in any trouble. You're not a suspect, and we're just trying to figure out the truth about what happened. That's fine. How long have you known Rocky Bryant? forever because my dad was good friends with him as well. Okay. As far as you know, did he have any enemies? Or was there anybody that wanted to do anything to him? No. Uh, reputation being a pretty nice guy? Oh, yes. I'm not trying to scare you anything, but there's only two people we can see that had any motive to do this. Louis is one of the people. Who do you think the other person would be? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Did it ever occur to you that maybe Martel might have done this? No. Come on. I want to show you something. I decided to do something I wouldn't normally do. I take her into our war room, look up on that board. And he's up there, and now I'm trying to get him off. My hope is that she'll understand the severity of the situation, and not only will she help us eliminate Martell as a suspect, but maybe she'll give us more information to help clear the case. This is one of the few times I felt bad about upsetting a witness. No, I feel like I'm going to turn up. She actually becomes ill, but that's my job. If we're going to get information, we do it any way we can. I can't take Martell off the table until we know exactly what happened. You don't I'm think that's my that Okay. I know it's got an alibi, mm -hmm. but if there's anything else you've got that help us get Martell out of this, please tell us. How's it going, man? I'm good. What's your name? My name is Oh. I know Pat's like a mother to you, but you don't want to lose your husband and the father of your children. We were going to need to talk to you. I don't know if you're aware, but. Oh, yeah, I was we're... coming to check on the wife. Okay, yeah, she's fine. Martell's here. Is there anything else you can tell us that would help us find out what happened? Huh? <laughs> 
She can go home anytime she wants. She's fine. Okay. Ashley is really heartfelt, and I feel like if she had some other little piece of information, she would have told him. I don't think she's got it. No, and my child's over here. I know. So do you want to bring them in there together? I'd rather them not be together yet, because she's upset. You know, technically, Martell has way more motive than Louis does because Patricia's his mom and he's going to want to defend her. He needs to come up with a really good, solid, credible explanation for why it's not him. He's skinny. Martell comes in the room and he's far smaller than what I imagine. I'm not even sure if Martell could put a beating on someone like Rocky took. A package he's taking Ashley home. Why she's crying? Because I explained when we came in here, there's three people that are suspects in this case. Patricia, Louie, and you. I'll see how. Here's the deal. Whoever killed Rocky knew his routine. Yeah. I don't think Louie knew Rocky's routine enough to know to be in that building at 7 o'clock in the morning. Right. Somebody had to tell him where to be and when to be there. Right, right. I hear you on that. And the person knew his routine more than anybody else is your mom. Right. Did he ever throw his mother under the bus? I don't think he will. Nope. Unless you did. No. Okay. That ain't in my blood. I, I may be a lot of shit. A lot of people call it to me, but I ain't gonna kill it. Yeah. I'll tell you like this. Rocky was, at one point in time, he the only help I had. You know, because it, it was pretty bad for me. I mean, it, it was bad. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, if somebody killed him, it was just ridiculous. You know, it didn't make no sense. This affair with Louie and the mom, how long had that been going on? I, I kind of seen them flirt a little bit, but they never did anything in front of me. You think your mom's lying to us? I don't know. What do you think? Um, it looks kind of suspicious. Yeah, it do. <laughs> it do. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'd be pretty damn pissed if, if, if they did pop that shit out. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Rocky, he wasn't just my stepdad, he was my friend. I think he put on blinders to a lot of it, but I think he's always known his mom has been bad news. I don't have any reason right now to think you're lying to us, but if there's anything you do know, you need to tell us. Right. Martell and Ashley both seem very believable, but even though they have an alibi, that's not enough to rule Martell out as the killer. Free to go. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I got you. If I hear anything, All right. I got you. We need to concentrate on Louie to see if he gives us anything to indicate that he's actually the killer and steer us away from Martell. You don't want to talk to Johnny, the employer of Louie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Johnny and Cindy Matthews own the body shop where Louie worked at the time of Rocky's murder. We're hoping that they can give us some more insight into Louie's character. Louie Villarreal was working for you back then doing the paint and body work, is that correct? Yes. And he worked for us about four years. I have to come out and tell you, he was using drugs. You know what kind of drugs he was using? We all know what meth does to people. It makes you violent. It makes you think you can do anything. Louis doesn't have to be in love with Pat to kill Rocky. He just has to be jacked up one day and wants to prove that he's a big old, you know, badass. Cindy just said that he was having a relationship with the guy that got murdered, his wife. We need to talk to Cindy about that. Can you put her on the phone? Sure. Hey, Cindy, when did Louie tell you he was having an affair with the dead man's wife? You know, I was asking Louie, or, you know, what, you know, why were they closing you? And he, that's when he came out and told me about the affair. And he, he was worried and scared because he didn't want, you know, you guys to point the finger at him. And that was it. It seems pretty funny that Louie was so worried about his affair with Patricia being made known. It's time to start focusing more of our efforts on Louis. So Shane and Johnny Bonds are going to go out and talk to Louis's old roommate to see what he can add to the story. One of the people that come up in this, and as a suspect, I tell you, is Louis Villarreal. And I understand you worked with him, yeah. and maybe at one time even lived with him in Hobbs. Yeah, he was seeing Rocky's wife. How do you know that? Because she used to go over there. You actually moved in with him over in yeah. Hobbs for a while. Well, this we, is, we this would have been about a year and a half after the murder. Yeah. yeah. And I heard there was a problem. Well. He just got mad. At you? At me. Why? Because he was seeing some girl from El Paso. Because she started talking to me. Oh, really? And really? Supposedly, he thought we were messing around. I said, man, I just met the girl. So he was jealous? Yep. When he got mad, what did he do? He was just saying, uh, I'm going to get you for that. I'm going to get you for that. What? Like, he said, I'm going to kick your ass when we get out of here. 
Was he still doing drugs over yeah, there? he's still doing it. That kind of reaffirmed some of the things we thought. Johnny Perez kind of cheered me up a little bit. Johnny's saying Louie, jealous type. Yep, threatened him. Jacked up on them drugs. That helps. I'm hoping Mr. Eddie Singleton still remembers what he saw. Yeah, it's medical issues five years ago. Mr. Singleton lives across the highway from the plant. He told police officers that morning that he saw a man walking towards the plant around the time of the murder. Unfortunately, Mr. Singleton had had a stroke, so police officers were having a really hard time communicating with him. We reached out to him, and he was adamant about trying to communicate what his observations were. We're going to start out with Mr. Singleton. You remember that morning, don't you? You sitting out there drinking coffee under the patio, 27, 7.30, somewhere around in there? Yeah. And you saw a male subject walking towards Agri-Alliance. That's, fine. That's okay. No, we got all the time. He went around this way and back. That's good. Okay, so he came across, ran back here, and then to the station. Facing. Right. And the plant. Yeah. Okay. Can you draw a picture? Yeah. Here, I'll put the plant. Here's you. And here's the station down there. You saw him from the station go to the plant? Or, or from the plant back here? No. Oh. This was one route that he took, and that's another route that he took. And you saw both of them. Well, that blew me away because I never knew he saw that part. He got to see how the suspect went into the plant and how the suspect came out. And it matches exactly with what Hank picked up, too. It was perfect. One. One, one person. One person. Right. Was the male white, Latin, Latin? Yeah. Okay. Hispanic male. Mr. Singleton turns out to be a huge witness. He tells us that the man he saw walking to and away from the plant was a Hispanic male. So y'all want to X him off? Everybody's good? Yeah. And now we can finally take Martell off the board. There's only two people that are motive to kill Rocky. Louis Villarreal as the killer. Pat is the person that provided him with the information and egged him on to do it. It's time to start talking to those two. We're down to two suspects in the 2008 beating death of Rocky Bryant. We'll visit with you for a minute? Yes. Yeah. Now it's time to bring in Patricia Graves, who was Rocky's girlfriend at the time and the person we all think is the mastermind behind all of this. Are we ready? Yeah, come on. Patricia's pointed a finger at Louie in the past. What we're hoping now, though, is that she'll just sell him down the river. Your initial conversation with mm -hmm. Shane, you didn't tell him about Louie and your affair. I didn't want everybody to know. It wasn't a serious relationship. It was just a one-time thing. You know what this is? No. They subpoenaed yours and Louis' phone records. Mm -hmm. Y'all were texting each other 20 times a day for a month before this murder happens. Okay. You have a 30-minute conversation the day before this happens. He texts you one time 15 minutes after Rocky's attack. Mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't make sense. Why don't you ask him? We will. Yeah, make sure you ask oh, him. We will. Patricia is as hard as they come. The only way we're going to get anywhere with her is if we already have the information. I've also seen the tapes after you take the polygraph test. You actually say, well, I think Lewis did it. Me and Rocky would get into arguments. And he would say stuff like he was going to kick his ass. You didn't encourage him to. No, I would never do that. I would never want anybody to hurt him, ever. Did he ever say he's going to kill him? No, he didn't say that. Did he ever say nothing like that? I wasn't involved. I didn't ask nobody to do nothing. I didn't ask do nothing. You know, was I seeing somebody? Yeah, I did. Just because I'm having an affair don't mean I had nobody Doesn't killed. mean you're killed. That's crazy. I don't think you meant for it to be a killer. Well, I need to go to the house. My mom's headed from home from the doctor. You sure you want to leave here with this as messed up as it is? You can call me anytime. 
After talking to Pat and our wish being that she would flip on Louie, didn't happen. We need to focus on Louie and see if he'll flip on Pat. We're gonna need to talk to you. I thought this case was already closed. No, homicides are never closed. Okay, yeah. Can't we just talk here? No, no, because I got all the file system and everything there. Okay. Yeah. I guarantee you, he is sweating. Hop up front. Excellent. All right, let's go. You and Pat were... Right? Yes, sir. Okay. How many times? I, I don't know. I don't remember. Okay. But it was more than once. It was probably about maybe two, three times a week. Yes. Two to three times a week. It wasn't a serious relationship. It was just a one-time thing, you know. Did she end up telling you anything about Rocky? We never talked about Rocky. It's a lie. He would say stuff like he was going to kick his ass. Well, I wasn't the type that was going to be asking her, well, how was your relationship with your man? Okay. When I was the lady. Mm -hmm. I mean, get real. Somebody's going to come down on hard in a minute. He's cocky. I'm watching this, and I'm like, somebody needs to give him an attitude adjustment. Mondo's normally the good guy, and I feel like it's time for a hard ass to come in there. Lewis? Yes, sir. My name's Johnny Bond. You know who that is, that lady right there? Yes, sir, I sure do. I want you to listen to what she says. And that's because you yourself feel that who did it? Lewis? Yeah. If there's any way that I can prove it, trust me, I will. You understand what she said? Yes, sir. She dropping you in the grease. Yes, sir. But it wasn't me. Huh? It wasn't me. All right. Now, let me read you this. He's sweating now. Look. The first person to pop into my mind the morning of the murder was Louie. Because he always talked about kicking Rocky's ass. There it is. That's her writing. The first person I well, thought she's of. Fine. I didn't do it. I wouldn't kill nobody over a piece of. But you were tapping it pretty hard and heavy. And we got somebody else said that you acted like you were jealous. Bottom line is, you're going to go down for this and she's going to walk. This is your chance to get straight before this falls apart. I don't know what to tell you. It wasn't mine. Uh, if y'all want to mess with him some more, go ahead. You got any kids? Yes, sir, I do. Do you care about your... Yes, mess? I do. How about the kids? A lot. Listen to me very carefully, Louie. Okay. With the information that we have, I know. okay, you can forget about seeing your kids. Oh, look. You need to help yourself, okay? It wasn't me. Who the was it? The only thing that I can remember was her telling me that it was probably because he owed money. No, no. Somewhere in Dallas. No, 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 listen to me. You need to end up helping yourself. Mother, it wasn't me. Louis. He's trying to figure out what he should do. Well, I'm gonna tell you it wasn't me. Okay. I can't help you there, Louis. I can't help you, man. We think it's a good idea to go and pick up Patricia again and confront her with some of the stuff that Louie opened our eyes to. Louie's saying they were having sex two or three times a week. He's banging her like a cheap screen door. So if we can challenge her with this new information we got from Louie, and maybe she will give us some more. Hopefully she'll come back with you guys. Patricia Graves, Rocky Bryant's girlfriend, has agreed to return for another interview about his murder. We're hoping to catch her in more lies so that we have enough evidence against her to bring charges for her as being the mastermind behind all this. Can I see your hands? Okay. Have you ever heard the statement it was given with love and accepted with love? Mm -hmm. You don't remember that? Yeah. Patricia Graves says she was planning to marry Robert Bryant, better known as Rocky, on her birthday. It was given to me with a lot of love and accepted with a lot of love. Never taken it off since I got it. I'm not going to ever take it off. Why aren't you wearing it? It was given with love, it was accepted with love. I will never take it off. I just don't want to wear it. Back to good. You suspect that Louie is, is the one that killed Rocky? Yeah. Was Louie your lover? We slept together one time. Just one time? Yeah. He said y'all were having sex on a regular basis. Now, while Rocky was alive, you didn't. Sure didn't. That was afterwards. Whoa! 
all of a sudden, she's admitting that she is having sex with this guy that killed her husband. The motive for the murder just got a lot stronger. Baby, if you kill him, I'll give you all the you want. You see? You just put it on both of them yeah. harder without knowing yeah. it. This is great shit. So, you're banging the killer of Rocky three or four times a week that you specifically told Shane Scott that you thought he did it. Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. Look at her leg. I just did it. You know that looks bad, don't you? I know. Okay, do you have anything else to tell us? No. Okay. Well, let's go. If sex was money, this would be a capital murder. We could ask for the death sentence because he got paid. She just made this case a slam dunk, in my yeah. opinion. And all that we have, yeah. with every witness we talked to this whole week, add new information. This case is beautiful. Even though Patricia and Louie want to say that they didn't kill Rocky, the overwhelming circumstantial evidence in this case is that they did. At first, Patricia denied their affair, and then she changed her story and said, well, it was just a one-time thing. It wasn't a serious relationship. Then Louie told us they were sleeping together all the time. Maybe two, three times a week. So then Patricia changed her story to say, okay, well, we were having sex more often, but it was only after Rocky was murdered. Really, why would you have sex with the person you told the police killed your boyfriend unless you're glad that your boyfriend is murdered? And when you add in the fact that Louie is a known womanizer and uses drugs... You know what kind of drugs he was using? Coke, marijuana, a little bad. ...who's also possessive and who has a bad temper. Maybe say stuff like he was going to kick his ass. And don't forget what Mr. Singleton said. One person, Latin. Yeah. He saw a Hispanic male coming and going from the plant at the exact same time Rocky was attacked. Patricia knew Rocky's schedule, and she could have very easily have told that to Louie. And look at their suspicious patterns of texting and phone calls right around the time of the murder. One of them was just 15 minutes after the time Rocky was beaten. The motive in this case was way more than being about money. It was for Patricia and Louie to be able to be together anytime they wanted. But that's not going to happen. This morning we presented our case to the DA and now I can't wait to go tell Frederick that the DA has agreed to take the charges and present the case to a grand jury to ask him to indict Louie and Patricia for the murder of Rocky Bryant. That's good news. He's going to present it to the grand jury come July the 11th and we're going to get an indictment on Louie, Pat as well. <sighs> Told you, Dad wasn't going to be forgotten. It's over. I feel like I can be some good to myself and to somebody else now because somebody was good to us. Uh, speaking for me and my family, this is what we've been waiting for, some kind of closure. I know Shane's all relieved. I can't even say it enough how much I thank y'all for this. You're very welcome. He's just so happy that the people who killed his dad are finally going to pay. It was a beautiful moment, and that's how you want every single case that we look into to end. I hope they all end that way. Good luck. It's like the best feeling in the world. I wanted to shout, love you, Dad. Ah, My biggest hope is that if something good happens for Frederick, then I hope Frederick will have a different outlook on his own life. How are you doing, ma'am? We just need to talk to Louie real quick. Oh, okay. Come here, Marlo. 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 Come here, Marlo.